I'm Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Now, I know I've been missing in action the last few months. I recently moved. I have a new studio. Some of the photos are a little off kilter, but we're getting there. I'm just so excited to be back in the studio filming, and I cannot wait to start pumping out more information that you guys can enjoy and soak up about drone news and tips. This episode is brought to you by DJI. You sit on a throne of lies. I'm kidding, but it can be if they want it to be. In today's episode, we are going to talk about something that every drone pilot dreads and hopes doesn't happen to them. But before we get into it, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on drone news and tips. There are a few events more instantaneously heart-stopping than dropping an expensive electronic product in the water. We've all been there when we almost drop our phone or another electronic device in water. I'm sure you can relate with that. It's gut-wrenching. If not, then you're the lucky one, but you will experience it. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby! This can be even more devastating if the expensive electronic product happens to be your beloved drone, my baby. Whether this happens to be a professional DJI drone or a cheaper drone made for hobbyists, water submersion can be the kiss of death, but it's not always the case. Most drones are not built to be water resistant. However, there are several steps you can take to saving your drone from water damage if you can recover in time. And by recover in time, I mean like get your butt in the water and grab it as soon as possible or that baby is gonna be done for. Keep watching to learn more about what you should know if your drone falls in the water and what steps you could take to rehabilitate your poor little dude before it sustains serious water damage. Ooh. I swear I'm not a child. So I was just like, you know, droning over a friend's pool. Well, bam, the drone just fell in the water. What do I do next? If your drone falls in the water, the first thing you should do is try to remove the drone from the water as quickly as possible. I mean, duh, of course. Um, what else would you do? But this should be done to prevent any further water damage to it. Because the longer the drone stays in the water, the more the water will pour into the crevices of your drone, causing further damage. Of course, the ease of this task may depend on exactly where your drone becomes submerged in water. I mean, if your drone crashes into a pool or a shallow lake, you should be able to get it pretty easily. I mean, you might have to full send it with your clothes on, but hey, it's your baby, so it's worth it, right? <laughs> However, if your drone crashes into torrential waters or a deeper, vaster body of water, like let's say the ocean. Fresh water source, that makes sense. But you find yourself in the ocean, you lose that battle nine times out of 10. <laughs> you honestly just may be better off looking for a replacement at this time. Because the minute that puppy hits the water, it will sink quickly. When I first started droning, I was taking wedding photos and I decided to bring my drone with me to a destination wedding to snack some complimentary footage for the bride and groom and also to build my portfolio along the way. Now, I might have shared the story already in a previous YouTube video, but I'm just gonna reshare it for like the 10 of you that actually, you know, subscribe and watch my channel. Anyways, we were on this incredible beach, you know, this one with the swinging tire, and the bride and groom were playfully holding each other in the ocean. It felt like that scene with Leonardo and that hot chick in the movie, The Beach. I mean, I'm guessing there is a scene with him with the hot chick on the beach because, you know, most of the movies with Leonardo are that. Would you like to come to the beach with me? Sure, yeah. But it was disgustingly cute. I was flying over the bride and groom getting this sick shot when my drone just fell out of the sky, out of nowhere, and just plunged into the sea. The, the drone was gone within seconds. I mean, somehow I had this idea that I would be able to catch up to it like Wendy Peppercorn in the Sandlot and just dive in and go grab it. We all know that didn't happen. So I was clearly thinking I would do the impossible. My dreams of being a Wendy Peppercorn were quickly squashed. It sunk to the bottom of the ocean floor like a stone. If you're flying over the ocean, it's likely your drone will be swallowed by the ocean before you even consider jumping in. In that specific scenario, I did get the drone back, but only because the ocean was about like 10 feet deep. The groom was cool enough to swim down to snag for me, and the water was crystal clear. I mean, it is the U.S. Virgin Islands. I was very lucky, considering most of the time people, when they lose their drone in the ocean, it's just gone. If you're one of the lucky few that can retrieve the drone, then the first thing you should do is turn off its power or move its batteries. You see, multiple parts within a drone can experience failure related to water damage. Crazy fact, battery failures can result in small fires and explosions. Explosions? That's sick, bro. No, Kyle, it's not sick. Your drone will be a goner. Fine, not sick. 
Once you have removed the batteries, the safest way to dispose of them is to take them to a hazardous waste drop-off location in your area. Just Google it. Once you have removed your drone's batteries, you should then continue your examination of its parts. In some cases, there will be no damage whatsoever to your drone's main board or circuitry. However, as these parts are highly susceptible to water damage, they'll likely will be. In this case, you will need to replace the main board, which typically costs about $100, which is like, you know, a night or two out with your boom. Really, dude? This sounds complicated. Kyle, I totally get that. If you have the money to do it and you're cool with just sending it into the manufacturer, then do that. Once you have checked your drone's batteries, mainboard, and circuitry, you have completed your check through of the most dangerous and damaged susceptible parts of your drone. There are generally two types of motors that drones will employ, brushed motors and brushless motors. Brushed motors typically found on cheaper, older drones may be susceptible to some water damage. However, most modern drones, such as DJI drones, employ brushless motors, which are generally resistant to water damage. The next part you should check in your drone is the gimbal assembly. Okay. The gimbal assembly of your drone is the part that connects the camera to the drone and it allows it to move in a locked joint position. As the gimbal assembly consists of several parts that are capable of movement, water can cause damage to this part. The most pressing sign you should look for when examining the gimbal assembly is corrosion. Corrosion is your enemy. Judas. Jim is my enemy. But it turns out that Jim is also his own worst enemy. And the best course of action you can take to prevent corrosion in any part of your drone is to rinse it with alcohol. If only that could be the solution to all of our problems, right? Just to be showered or given alcohol? That's a bad idea. Ah, you're moving too fast to the prompter. Dude, what about the camera? It's important to check the camera of your drone for any water damage. The camera on your drone is slightly more water resistant than most digital or film cameras you may also own. This is due to the lack of crevices or smooth exterior of the drone's camera. However, the camera's lens and the sensor may still be... Come on, teleprompter. You're drunk. Keep up with me. However, the camera's lens and the sensor may still be susceptible to water damage. You must check the functionality of your camera's lens and sensor. If your camera's picture is blurry, then there is likely damage to either of these parts. Or maybe your drone is just drunk because you just, you know, rinsed it out with alcohol. But a but. <laughs> Unfortunately, this means you will likely have to purchase a new camera for your drone. As you are examining each and every part of your drone, as well as after you've completed these examinations, who wrote this? Basically, what it comes down to is you should just flush any water out of every crevice of your drone. While different types of water can be damaging to your drone in different ways, all types of water can cause harm to various parts of your drone. Water can easily seep into the main board, circuitry, or batteries of the drone, which are the most dangerous places for water to be. Salt water can cause serious corrosive damage to various parts of your drone, including the motors and the gimbal assembly. If you're one of the unlucky few that, you know, dumped your drone in salt water, then I feel for you. Salt water is full of chemicals and will cause corrosion and electrical shorts. Alrighty then. Now I've heard of people taking the battery out of the drone and rinsing the drone with fresh water after it's been in salt water. And I would love to hear your feedback below in the comment section because I know a lot of you have your opinions and have good and bad things to say about this. Have you heard the same? I mean, I know it sounds counterintuitive adding more liquid to the drone, but I see the logic and it prevents further damage caused by salt. Once you have flushed the water out from your drone, the best course of action you could take to rehabilitate your drone is to perform the raw rice method. This essentially entails submerging your drone in a container full of raw rice and just leaving it out to dry for anywhere from several hours to a couple of full days. The raw rice will gradually soak up the moisture, completely drying your drone. Can I just put Ma's blow dryer on it and just, you know, wipe it down? You may want to use a hair dryer or a cloth to dry out your drone. However, the raw rice method is the safest and most effective method as a hair dryer or cloth may cause further damage by spreading the water throughout the drone rather than picking it up. Additionally, using a hair dryer runs the risk of overheating fragile electronic components. Let's cue the haters. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of droners saying different things about this method. I kind of went down a rabbit hole on Mavic forums and man, oh man, 
then was I entertained. One of my favorite comments was someone responding to someone talking trash about the raw rights method. You may believe that it won't work and that's your prerogative. I think you fully misinterpreted what people use rice for. Think of rice like a very drunk half twit doctor. He's not what you may want and you could very you know well die but he's the best chances you've got if he's all that is wrong. Hope to god I never have to come across a drunk or half twit doctor when I'm about to die. That sounds awful. There is so much conflicting information online. I just believe it's worth a try if you don't want to send your drone in to the manufacturer and you can't afford a new drone. I put it in a bag of rice this morning. Is it good to take out? <clears throat> take a moment and assess if you waited long enough. I'm not talking about six hours. You want to leave that puppy in the rice for a day or two, you impatient little half twit. Sorry, I, I really had to use that word again. It's just, it's just too good. <laughs> Once you believe the raw rice method has been utilized to its fullest capability, you should perform a power on test. To do so, acquire a new battery that's clean and dry. Put the battery back in place and turn the power back on. If you notice anything unusual, such as, you know, smoking, sparking, a peculiar smell, then you should shut down the power immediately. This may indicate that there is still damage present in your drone and you should take it to a professional to get repaired. However, if there are no unusual occurrences, then your drone should be good to go. Finally, you should check to see if your drone comes with a warranty. DJI drones come with DJI Care Refresh. It's basically a protection plan that offers damage coverage for any of their products for anywhere between one and two years. You may not be able to rehabilitate your drone, but with a warranty, you should be able to replace your drone at no additional cost. Ultimately, being prepared is the best step you can take to preventing damage. Here's another thought. How about just getting insurance so you don't ever have to worry about losing a drone to the ocean? So at this point, you should know what to do if your drone falls in the water and what steps you can take to rehabilitate your little dude before it sustains severe water damage. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, smash the subscribe button to see more videos and comment below if you have any drone related questions or stories to tell. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.